This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. Parental discretion is advised. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, sliceonbroadway.com. IndieWrestling.us. Check out IWC, RWA, and more. And listeners like you, support this show at patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show. Just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait. Wait for the perfect time and attack. Don't give a what you want, take it back. Wait for the perfect time and attack. It is the Wrestling Mayhem Show 681 Tuesdays. We've been uh, talking professionalized wrestling. It is Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter in the Sorgatron Media Studios in the Pittsburgh, PA relative area. Uh, in Pittsburgh, actually. Uh, I almost, I don't give you guys the neighborhood. We just don't, you just know we're in Pittsburgh. We're here, right on the tracks. The train's going by. Blind people are pointing at our guest uh, from outside. It's it's already an interesting night here on the Wrestling Mayhem Show. And back with us from Beacon, New York. He is the only Mayhemer with a future Endeavor letter from the WWE. He is Mad Mike. Yeah. Hey, Sork. Um, l- listen, we we had a we had a short show last night. I forgot. I wanted to throw in a travel recommendation. A travel recommendation. Where's that? Yeah. Uh, this past weekend, I was in Tallahassee, Florida. Hmm. Yeah, um, I actually uh, went to a nice little restaurant called okay. the, Long- the Longhorn Steakhouse. The Longhorn Steakhouse, Florida. Yeah, zone. I know it. It's a bit of a chain. I understand that, but okay. I heard especially good reviews about this one. You don't get anything like that in upstate New York. No, of course not. No, we have like Texas Roadhouse and all yeah. that stuff. It's it's terrible. The it's one where disaster. you throw yeah, you throw peanuts on the floor. It's weird. <clears throat> yeah, and I, and honestly, I hate peanuts. So yes. you know. But uh, yeah, so I, I went to the Longhorn Steakhouse down there. Um, had a really great time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Had a really great time. Good, good. That's yeah, good to hear. It's good to hear. Yeah, no, I mean, you know, um, picked up a few things here and there. You okay. know, Ladies. grabbed whatever, grabbed whatever was lying around. Okay, all right. Yeah, a little bit of Florida bling bling, right? Yeah, good. yeah, nothing wrong with that. No, yeah, nothing wrong with that. Good no. to hear. Good to hear that you had a good time there, and, mm-hmm. uh, and, and maybe fifteen pounds heavier uh, from the Longhorn Steakhouse. They have a lot of steak. Yeah, exactly, oh, dude. So much steak. That's I mean, right. I can't even tell you. In fact, Sorg, I had to catch a ride home. I couldn't drive myself. Oh. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I luckily there was a limo there. Mm-hmm. Um, I just wait. Just sitting there. There was just a limo. Just sitting there. Just just lion salting around. Yeah. Just lion. Uh, <laughs> Oh, okay. Yeah, that's um, it. Yeah, okay. um, paid pay the guy a fiver because mm-hmm. you know Florida. Um, yeah, no, he just took me to the airport and came back. He's like, "Oh yeah, my you know, the guy I'm waiting for, he's gonna be in there a while anyway." Okay, you know, talking about bubbly something like that. I don't know. Okay, All right. I I didn't ask who it was. I wasn't even curious. Okay. Yeah. Good to hear. Good to hear you had mm-hmm. a good time. Well, we got a guest with us, Mike, uh, with us. He's actually already been on our podcast. So if you want to check out uh, the awesome cast, uh, he is uh, on there known as Black Dutters. Um, we'll just leave that to you guys. But the Iceman Tony Johnson is here. Hello. Welcome. Thanks for having me again. Well, no, this is your first time on this show. Oh, uh, that's right. You've been on two other podcasts. It confused me because this couch, I didn't realize. Same couch, different new levels. day. Mm-hmm. New, well, now, yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Nice. And now we have the vibe for the show. So, um, I, I have a question. Mm-hmm. As Black Dutters, has he mooned the studio yet? Uh, no, but that is a requirement for your leaves. Yes. Okay. I just wanted to make sure that's part and parcel of the whole gig. And the moon's out. So no one's going to see you. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's right. Uh, <laughs> thank you for joining us. Of course, we're getting ready for uh, a big weekend with Rise Wrestling with a Y uh, that we'll talk about here later in the show. And uh, and uh, we'll have some fun with that. Ronnie Starks is on assignment um, slash recovering from his uh, Black Diamond uh, title shot that he had this past Sorry, weekend. he's a coward. Or he's a coward. He's a coward. He's, uh, you he don't... knew... He knew performance review day was today. Mm-hmm. He knew I had a prawn dress report about him. Oh, that doesn't sound like prom dress when you're not on nope, Facebook. It, it does not. 
I thought you were saying prom dress report all night last night. Yeah, I know. I <laughs> by the way, I did find my headphones. So if we need to do that again, oh, I, I will be much more clear. We'll just do a mulligan on last night's show. Yeah, but um, but he knew this day was coming, mm-hmm. and Sorg, like a coward, he bailed. Well, just mail the progress report home. That's what they did when I was a kid. <clears throat> Oh no no! See, I have to deliver it personally. Is that the, mm. Isn't that? I, I I have to I have to tell him why he's terrible. Mm. Okay. <laughs> well, anyways, this is the Wrestling Mayhem Show. You can tell us why how we are terrible over at that email address. Good times. Good times at WrestlingMayhemShow dot com. Uh, I did get a notice, so you may want to wait a day on that because I did get a notice that there may be an issue with that. I want to check that out after the show. Um, Broken link. Broken link. Thank you. Maybe that's why GoDaddy was talking. It was calling me today. We're going Sport, to get. Did you not pay Candace Michelle this month? No, I pay. No, please <laughs> believe me. Candace <laughs> Michelle got her nugget from me. Okay, <laughs> and I play. I, I have paid to the uh, the Denica Patrick uh, uh, gods, and um, and uh, and and my email should work. Uh, so we'll fix that. But in the meantime, you should still be able to call us at 412-206-WMS0. Tweet us at Mayhem Show. That still works, even though the CEO got hacked of Twitter. Uh, hit us up on the Wrestling May- Mayhem Show Facebook page and the Wrestling Mayhem Show Facebook group, where I've been sharing all the interesting things friends of the show have been doing this past weekend. Holy crap. Um and uh, also, you can join us here every Tuesday uh, on Facebook Live, except for the next Tuesday's programming note. We're usually here every Tuesday at 9 p.m. Eastern Time. The Sorgs are going on vacation next week. We oh, were going man. to go to uh, Myrtle Beach, then something called a hurricane happened. And uh, Stand back. so if anybody knows mm. um, good things to do around Waynesboro, Virginia, uh, that's where I'll be. And I do know there's a winery nearby. Uh, so... Sork, how close is that to Virginia Beach? To Virginia Beach? It uh, looks like pretty far, also in the path of a hurricane. Okay, never mind that. Yes. Because yes. I've gone to Virginia Beach many times. Let's I can tell you a lot of things to do around Basically, there. the beach is out. Okay. Yeah, that's where we're at right now. Anyways, um, what the hell? Would, would a plunger wrapped as a barbed wire work as a weapon? Is that, um, is that just a general question in the chat room? Oh, wow. Or Let's is that a... Let's do a deep dive on hold this. on, let's um, let, let's hold let's hold that let's hold that until the, we have questions for our guest. Time. Okay, I'll I'll so, think about it. So <laughs> Rev's mom. Yeah. Anyways, um, <laughs> I'm sorry, I just remembered that video. Also, if you catch us at any <laughs> other time, uh, you can catch us later. If you catch us later on any other outlets, please continue the conversation. Tweet us at Mayhem Show with hashtag WMS six eight one for that. Um and you can hit us up. Oh, support the show. I'm sorry. No, what am I doing here? This is backwards. Oh, hey, support the show. Support our friends. We're also streaming at the 405 media.com. Check your listing on there so you can fall asleep every night to the sweet sounds of mayhem. I think we're kind of taking over that website. I don't know. <laughs> There's a lot of mayhem and awesome cast happening on that website these days. Um, but anyways. Also, thank you to our Patreons that support the show at patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show. Our friends at the fan of the show, one dollar level. Bo Diggity! Woo! Ed Burke, Bobby F. J Town, uh, Tina Keys at Team Ham Fist, uh, at the Pocky Club, five dollar level. Bradley Ruthers, uh, Doc Remedy, Dave Potter, Kyle Turner, and Daniel Towery at the Pizza Club. $10 level at a marked $13 is Ryan Clark and our friends at the $20 manager level, OccupyProWrestling.com. All of you guys, uh, just well, he's not here, so you have an extra week to um, to uh, file your uh, progress reports with uh, Ronnie Starks for his first uh, month or so on the show. Um, I understand the email is not working, so you can uh, please, as Alex did, uh, you can go ahead and respond to that. Uh, there's a post on your Patreon account um for uh, re- with those requests so just respond there and uh we will be sure to share those most likely and, on and, the air with one and ronnie please stars. factor in this act of cowardice yes. into your report cards yes so yes we'll uh get to that next week anyways apparently there was some <laughs> wrestling this weekend uh as we kind of previewed last week briefly but AEW did have a pay-per-view and the the UK, the NXT the UK had a show. Mm-hmm. 
Actually, they had a couple shows from what I understand. The, the NXT UK. The, the NXT UK. But I think also, didn't New Japan do a show there too? Uh, I don't know if it was in the UK. I thought it was like Royal no. Quest or something. And we, uh, we'd have to ask Matt Carlin. Okay, that. Matt Carlin. I, 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 yeah. I don't know about the New Japan. So yeah, no, no. It. Hard to keep up the New Japan. Dude, I watched Ring of Honor, and for the first time in forever, watching Ring of Honor TV, I got to see a Shane T- Taylor match. Nice! Finally! Every time, this has been a long thing, I cannot <laughs> see friend of the show Shane Taylor on Ring of Honor TV whenever I get a chance to tune in. Uh, Maybe I get an interview if I'm lucky, but I got a complete like match recap from whatever uh, Supercard or whatever just happened, so I was happy about that. Wasn't a full match, but still. Oh, uh, Tina says it was New Japan Royal Quest in London. In London, which I am imagine... like you're from London. I don't know where you sound like you were from <laughs> just then. You sound like he's from the islands. It's the islands? From London, like <laughs> I don't know. Maybe he's Australian. For getting Sarah Marshall. Oh. Oh, that was your Russell Brand impression. No, that was my um, uh, Paul Rudd impression. Uh oh, he was making fun of him. Yep. Yes, I love Ruff, Ruff keeps sharing. He is the cha- the champion of television. Yes, he is the TV champ. So, <laughs> um, uh, Shane Taylor uh, referring to there. I know we're jumping around a little bit. Uh, but no, NXT TakeOver uh, London happened. Uh, Mike, I know you'll probably watch it here eventually. Um, so, oh, yeah, I'll, I'll be getting to it. I just did not have a chance. There's too much wrestling. There's a, I know we there were was, dealing, there was a lot going on. There was two wrestling shows that, that I was dealing with in editing this, you know, shooting and editing this weekend, plus those ones. Um, but, uh, and plus it, it was very hard to get Wi Fi reception in Tallahassee. Yeah. Oh, of course. Of course. I had, I had other things on my mind mm-hmm. in Tallahassee, like getting out of Tallahassee with everything that I acquired there. It's a weird way to say that, but okay. Yes. Um, but anyways, uh, take over <laughs> as I'm getting updates about SmackDown. Um, this was my first jump into uh, NXT UK via uh, 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 over like episode 22 that I've been trying to crawl through of the back catalog of, of UK. Um, everything I wanted to happen happened. There was finger mm-hmm. snapping. There was strong British strong, strong style. People put their shoots up in the air. Um, mm-hmm. There was singing of people's names. Um, I got to see a full Walter match for the first time. Oh, how? Uh, wait, for the first time, really? I don't think I've ever seen a full Walter match. No, you didn't watch Takeover New York. Him and Pete Dunn. Mm, okay, then maybe I he, really. I was at New York. <laughs> that was in New York. Oh, well, then I guess I did. Huh? <laughs> huh? I just remembered. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Because I was gonna say I'm like he was on a Takeover. So yeah, maybe I didn't. Did I watch that one? I had to have. I had to have. Must not have stood out. My, but, but oh, you know what? That's when I was I was on a work trip, Mike. Oh, so things, right. Things okay. get a little fuzzy. Uh, sword. If yes. you haven't watched that, maybe maybe I should rewatch it. Anyways, yeah. So, um, and also one of the more um, I've seen. I don't know how many Last Man Standing matches, um, both personally and on television over the last like three months maybe and i feel like everyone has been absolutely unique yeah. Fr- from from um skewers and staple guns uh with bronco and jamie to uh beast man bleeding all over the place <laughs> to uh <laughs> to uh to to i know there was another one oh there was the time the set got uh blown up on rock a few weeks ago right and mm-hmm. uh this one was uh, uh, a minute into it we, we tore the turnbuckle off the post Oh, and started it. using that, and then at some point, um, we we learned. You know how like like the plunder comes out. Like if we pull it out from underneath, like there's a shopping cart we brought down, or it's in a or it's in a, a, a trash can. Right. Um, uh, well, they say bin over there. A bin, bin. or a bin. It'd a, be a, bin, a bin. Sorry. Yeah. Um, it, it's just in a sack that they, they oh, have okay. in the ring. That that's what okay. I learned. That's 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 what I learned from British wrestling this week. Okay. So uh, it's just haphazardly O plunder. Sack O plunder is yeah. what it is. Um and um and Vic Joseph, uh who who I've worked for uh, worked with um um up in uh, uh Cleveland and Prime Wrestling, uh had the line of the night where he uh said uh he he made a Casey Jones reference. And it was it was. Did my you say Jose night. Canseco bet? No, no. He's, well, <laughs> I can't remember, but I wanted him to say you need to know what a crumpet is before you. Know, <laughs> but uh, right. 
uh, it, but he did appreciate my Casey Jones gif afterwards. Uh, but anyways, okay. Oh, and also, I have I didn't get to watch um, UK Takeover, but someone who was at UK Takeover, mm-hmm. uh, Lin Manuel Miranda of Hamilton fame, mm. he tweeted he was there, and he is a huge fan of Cesaro. Oh, so I responded, "Please write Cesaro a new entrance theme song," and Cesaro appreciated it. Nice, <laughs> nice, Cesaro. So, yeah. So, with any luck, maybe that's. I don't know. Um, I doubt it. Do not know anything about Cesaro's opponent. I believe he was Dragunov? German. Dragonoff. Dragonoff. Yeah, Russian. Uh, he, whatever. He was a guy they touted as like a really big deal. Came in, won two matches, and then lost everything since. Well, he was amazing against Cesaro. Okay. Good. So uh, I won't spoil it whether he won or not, but you can probably imagine. Um, back on that last man standing match, there was a certain point where they were in the crowd, and there was like it was like you know they're back in an aisle way, and it just felt like they were having a pub fight. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like like it was that was the vibe going on there, despite them being in the arena and everything. Was there fish and chips? Uh I, I was don't. There, was there was there Guinness? Wouldn't it be great if Fish and Chips was like their version of like Tarantula with nachos? There it is. Yeah, that, that would, would be. Or like, be great. In, or like instead of a big bag of popcorn, it's just a big bag of Fish and Chips. <laughs> <laughs> is that how they do it over there? I, I'm Probably. learning so I much. Uh, Matt Carlin said it's okay. Sorry, he doesn't remember much of Walter and Dunn match either. Oh, mm. there's too much. Matt, Matt's, Matt's just being a hater. Uh, Tina is letting us know that Dragonoff is known from the WXW promotion out of Germany. Mm-hmm. So, and I, I think David Starr that we've talked to on the show uh, previously was from uh, WXW too, doing some really cool stuff. So, um, but no, it was a really fun show. Uh, the tag match was was great. Uh, they had a three way tag match for that. I believe the first Welsh champions in WWE history. So they make good mm-hmm. juice. I'm sorry, Welsh is. Oh no, Welsh. <laughs> Ah. Welsh. Okay, I didn't. Uh, you fit in just fine on this show. <laughs> uh, I said he's been warmed up with Awesome Cast, yeah. um, where we made him, where where we made him find Dutters type stories. Yeah. Oh, lovely! So you had to read about porn. Yes. Yeah. Actually, that yeah, is. that's what happened. He, you learned something did, did about. You, did you talk about uh, Pornhub saving the rainforest? No, I looked under their <laughs> technology section, and it's very limited. Let me tell you. One page when you look up safe for work technology. You don't go in through the front door. You go through the yeah. back door. <laughs> <laughs> That's what they say. Huh? That's their motto. Anyways, <laughs> um, Tina, I hope Junior's uh, it, it, to bed. Uh, <laughs> okay, he doesn't know what any of this stuff means. No? Okay. Uh, but no, a lot of fun. Uh, and then AEW happened apparently later that day for the rest of us. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> Oh boy, AEW. Um, you watched the whole thing. I did. I watched the whole thing, and boy, did I listen to it as well. Okay. <laughs> uh, uh, I will say the clips that I've seen. Uh-huh. I I watched the Orange Cassidy clip, and I had seen it several times on my Twitter feed. Yep. But yeah, I Orange only Cass- yesterday listened to it. Oh. And Jr. I- is being introduced to everybody for the first time, and is very <laughs> noticeable. He works for the fucking company. I like, if if you, oh, you told can me he stuff. was literally on a payphone in 1993, he would not be phoning it in anymore. Yeah, yeah. Um, it, it's oh, obvious. God. I'm with you. I hope Jr. isn't doing the week to week. Um, and I understand. And you just heard clips. Yeah, like you just heard that one clip. The whole show. His partner's doing the play by play, right? Yeah, Excalibur is great. That's Excalibur I was hearing? Excalibur is great. Okay. Really, really good. I like because Excalibur a lot. I like Excalibur. The other guy's decent, too. Like, I think they have a solid team. Um, Golden Boy is okay, but he sounds a little too similar to Excalibur for me. He does. No, yeah. It, like, literally, I don't I don't know which is which when both of them are doing the pre-show. Um, yeah. And, of course, Tony Schiavone is going to... Is Tony Schiavone going to be on the call for the weekly? Honestly, no one fucking knows. We just know, I, I, we just I know thought he was going to be on All Out. Yeah. I um, thought he'd be on All Out, but 
I think I would be. He is. He is signed on. We 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 just. I mm. imagine, and also, or is he going to be backstage? You know, because I think he officially well, announced it at, at Star. What I heard, I thought I read somewhere that it's going to be Tony Jr. and Excalibur <sighs> on the weekly show. And that sounds terrible. Well, I mean, you still got you got Tony and Excalibur at least, right? So. Yeah, but uh, the the Mike, JRness of it, Mike, and I say this only because you don't like him, and I have no problem. But at least it's not Josh Matthews. No, it's no, but it's not that I don't even. It's not that I don't like Jr. Mm-hmm. That's not it either. It's just I feel like, and I don't know this for sure. I'm guessing. Okay, this is just me wildly speculating. I feel like JR has so much clout and respect from a lot of the guys that no one is producing him. Uh, okay. Okay. I have a. F- Again, this is me wildly speculating. So we're seeing JR without a Vince in his ear. Yes. That's what. That's my thoughts on it. Because if. Granted, I'm not a producer of a wrestling show, obviously. No, no. But if I'm, but if I'm a producer of a wrestling show. The first time JR calls Jungle Boy Jungle Jack Perry, I'll be <laughs> like, Jim, his name is Jungle Boy. Call him Jungle Boy. You wouldn't say Undertaker Mark Calloway, now would <laughs> you? Right, right, right. Like, it ruins the gimmick. Right. It ruins the gimmick every single time. Like, <sighs> Um, Matt, Matt, too, Matt has but... some Matt has some commentary uh, on the commentary. Okay, oh. uh, he says I didn't think uh, Excal- Excalibur had a very good night Saturday, but Gold Boy has been quite a revelation. Uh, that, is that the guy from the pre-show that I heard with him? Um, yeah. Okay. I'm just happy, you know. I, my reservations with Jr. I'm just glad uh, Conrad isn't on the call. Respect yeah. Conrad, but. I think I I think I'd rather have Conrad than JR. <laughs> like so, honestly, I don't I don't know why they need a three man booth in the first place. Mm-hmm. I don't know why they need a three man booth. No, I no, think no. They want to be different. I've been arguing against the dude. I've been arguing against a three man booth at indie shows because it just gets yeah. crowded. Um, but also, for a company that their first critique was, they're just a t shirt company. JR sure did mention a lot of things that would be good t shirts. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's not a joke. Like, I counted at least three times, I think. Mm. That is like, oh, there's a t shirt right there. I'm like, <laughs> you're, you're not a t shirt. Oh, this. So, so Matt's calling this out, and I, I, I'm sure you have thoughts on this. Matt's saying his big issue for him is JR has been going into business for himself and critiquing yep. stuff live on the air. Are you serious? Yeah, has been. Yes, so, he has been. And he's also been plugging his podcast. <laughs> like, dude, this is not your fucking That's how they got the podcast. discount. This is not your fucking podcast. You have to talk about it and analyze, not critique. Mm. Like... Was there uh, any mention of barbecue sauce? Yes! Well, there you go. Product placement. Mm-hmm. Thanks, AEW. Uh, I yep. mean... It's... Oh god, it's not good. It's not good. And there's still the issue of him commenting on like Nyla Rose matches, mm-hmm. Sunny Kiss matches, mm-hmm. and he just compl- like LAX showed up at the end of the um, the ladder match. Mm-hmm. Jr. completely no sold it. Like Excalibur's going nuts, and Jr. just like. Oh, well, these guys will add something to the tag team division. Meanwhile, they just took out the Bucks and the Lucha Brothers. Mm-hmm. No, that's a problem. And, and and hopefully they can notice. Hopefully management gets to gets to that. Um, but um, again, I, I hope someone behind the scenes steps up and tells him. Absolutely. Um, if, not, awesome. if not them, like, I mean, I'm sure they got somebody to answer to a TNT yeah. on that. Because commentary has driven me away from a product before. Mm-hmm. And Regardless of how good the in-ring product is, it will do so again. Because if I watch your product on mute, guess yeah. what? I'm not going to watch your product again. Something we see with good indie companies if they don't have their their uh, uh, commentary together, that really drags it down. Or yeah. a a rough or mediocre show 
I have commented to people we've worked in. And I was like, listen, you guys added credibility to that show we just did. <laughs> you know, like yeah, that is seriously sure something. It, break match. it happens both ways. Mm-hmm. So, um, no, completely with that. Um, uh, uh, Matt, and, uh, I, we should also mention AEW crowned a champion, Sorg. They did crown a champion. Mm-hmm. Uh, right now, we don't know who that is. <laughs> hmm. Right. Uh, I No, I assume it's 24-7 championship rules. The greatest thing when uh, the news came out about um, about the uh, the location of the belt, we should really say in case people haven't heard. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Location so, of the belt, Sorg. No one knows where this thing is. Right. 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 It's great for audio listeners. <laughs> <laughs> this bit really works for audio listeners. That's right. That's right. Can we just make this the screen grab of the show so they know what the fuck I'm talking about? I'm making a note right now. (laughs) Uh, But anyways, (laughs) the point I was getting to, so Chris Jericho beat Hangman Page, who, by the way, came out on a fucking horse. Yep. A lot of animals in this show. Mm -hmm. A lot of animals in this show. That's that's He should have just come out the old down road. (laughs) Yeah, there's that too. Um... So that happened. Jericho wins and promptly loses the belt. Yep. No idea where it is. No clue. None whatsoever. <laughs> so um, that's a new wrinkle. Um, I uh, The internet right on top of this. I've seen a couple pictures I, already of just um, our truth with the AEW belt. <laughs> yep. Um, <laughs> Some of my favorites so far. Hell, it could be um, Eric Young. Could be Eric Young. He's found a belt in the trash before. That's true. Or Jim Duggan. So is, so is ha- yeah, exactly. So is Jim Duggan. <laughs> and promptly turned Canadian. Um, yep. Tony, Tony Johnson, you, you've you been a champion at a promotion or two. Yes. Um, have you ever lost a belt? No. No, I have not. It's always gotten back you don't to take it, who it needs You to. don't take it to the steakhouse with you? No, I've I've drank um, out of the Royal 8 Cup before. Yeah. At TJ's. Okay. But... <laughs> Uh, I've never taken a belt to a steakhouse. The really it is the tournament. Uh, uh, it's like a, it's kind of like a small Stanley Cup. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I think OSHA broke that this year. Yeah, yeah. Wait, what was the tournament? Because I, I saw the Haas tournament and then they had a tag tournament this year. What was the year for you? Uh, it was just the singles Royal Eight. I won it, it twice. Really? Mm-hmm. Cool. Two time Royal Eight winner here. Yes. Cody Rhodes just tweeted that he prefers Outback Steakhouse. <laughs> This is hey, you be- know what? You know what? If he brought his belt into the steakhouse, probably wouldn't have lost it. That is true. That is true. And it would make a nice serving tray. Oh, that's a good point. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's good point. shit. Uh, well, either way, the fact that like uh, Chris Jericho is, is cutting promos on whoever stole his belt from his hot tub is um, uh, completely Jericho. And uh, this was going to be the subject of a being the elite, I'm sure, very, very soon. Um, like I said, mostly um, the, the all-out pay-per-view, there are, cu- there are a couple items from it. First of all, um, no pyro with dogs. Oh, I heard about Pharaoh. this incident. Poor, poor, like, the first thing I saw, because I saw Pharaoh in the tunnel. Yeah, and now I and I saw the pirate. I'm like, oh no, what are they doing to that poor Pharaoh? So so he He's was coming out. With, so he was coming out with Brandy and Cody, correct? He came out with Brandy, Cody, and DDP. And, and DDP. DDP. Wait, why was DDP there? Uh, he was promoting his new Bang Energy drink. Hmm. That's ah. that's a that's a joke. <laughs> Anyways, uh, and apparently from the word, the word is that the pyro there wasn't supposed to be pyro during that segment, and there was, and the dog was. So uh, it's a very tightly run company. Yeah, yeah, very pyro's just run. going off. How do you accidentally have pyro? How does one accidentally have pyro? Accidental pyro is shouldn't be a thing. Accidental pyro while. Good name from my progressive rock band <laughs> is not a thing a well-run company has. That has to manage pyro. Yeah, because pyro, A, is expensive. Mm-hmm. Two, takes a while to set up. 
So either you're having pyro during I, your entrance or you're not. I feel like it's very specific because, I mean, well, I don't know about the setup, but like you could have just like kind of packs of stuff going off. Yeah, but you still, know, it, it, it depends it on the pyro. It takes a bit to set up. Yeah, but but also like you should only have as many as you need for the show. Yeah, exactly. Right? Maybe they got a good deal at like Costco. <laughs> like that's how this company's getting by. They're getting by all the good deals at Costco. Cracker barrel pyro. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but either that, way. That's that's one match I need to talk about. The uh the cracker barrel brawl. I'm sorry? What? Ooh. Yeah. That was a match. That was a match. Who was in that um, match? Uh, that that was Darby Allen. Oh, that's why he had the barrel. I've seen uh-huh. that. Oh, yeah, Darby so, Allen. Um, if you haven't seen, there is a, a clip oh. gif going around of him with the barrel behind him, um, jumping back off of the top of the rope into steps, breaking yeah. the barrel. Oh God, I can't. I'm blanking on the other two guys' names in the match. Was it so, Joey so, Janela? Joey Janela and um, uh, Jimmy Jimmy Jacobs. Jacobs. Oh, yeah. oh wow. Jimmy. Yeah, um, yeah. The match. By the started, way, by the way, Jimmy Jacobs doesn't know. Sorg, the match started with Jimmy Jacobs using a staple gun on himself. <laughs> Gotta set the tone. That's, That's how the match started. Okay. The next spot. The next. Jimmy Havoc. Spot, Jimmy, Jimmy Havoc. Havoc. Jimmy Havoc, excuse Not me. Not Jacobs. Pardon me. Okay. Oh, yeah. Jimmy Havoc? Yeah. Okay, then that makes a lot more sense. Then. Yeah, they're really that different. Uh, <laughs> no, Jimmy Havoc's different than J- Jimmy Jacobs. Oh, all right. Not much. Um, but, but anyway. <laughs> that, but anyway. Anyway. Um, the next spot was um, Joey Janela took out a bag of thumbtacks. Okay. Uh, put them in Jimmy Havoc's mouth. And put gaffer tape over his mouth. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh! Yep. Oh, and they they get they taped him to a chair. And then um, I believe Darby did a suicide dive onto him. Ooh, okay. Yep. Um, it was certainly a match. <laughs> um, th- a lot of real real storytelling. Mm-hmm. You, can, you can tell. Okay. Uh, that's the thing. All right. So AEW had a lot of really good in ring action. Not all of it's for me. I realize that because I'm still not the hugest fan of the Young Bucks. Just as a rule, I, you know, I'm okay with them. They're fine. Um, hardly any story. Mm-hmm. The entire show. Like there, there really wasn't anything going on story wise. And apparently, you're in the same boat as uh, your good friend from the midweek war, uh, Krista Joseph. Oh, uh, he 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 had some commentary after the show, really kind of tearing it apart for the storytelling and the and the development uh, going on over there. Um, and he's been defending it the last couple of days. Uh, so uh, I'm trying to pull it up because I'm seeing a lot of his responses right now. But um, do, 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 do. Tina, we're, we're, uh, Tina, it's a high spot. Everyone's seen it. It's a Canadian destroyer off a ladder. <laughs> Matt Jackson destroyer off the ladder. Yeah, I mean, there's, I mean, there's a lot of those going. Yeah, on I mean, there. you know, it, it, that gif has been circulated, and it's, I mean, it's, it's a big high spot. Sure, it mm-hmm. wasn't the ending of the match because it should have been. Well, again, and, and you it's... You a Canadian destroyer off a ladder through a table, and that's not the ending of your match. Maybe you should rethink the match. Mm. Tony, as the wrestler mm-hmm. here, <laughs> was probably in a, in a few matches like this. I mean, what are your thoughts on something like that? Uh, if, it's not the, if it's not the end, that makes the person look really, really strong. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, yeah, yeah. <laughs> So, yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. Like, that to me, like, because when Jeff Hardy always did his big spots mm-hmm. in those multi man liar matches, that was the end. Jeff's big spot was the end of Jeff for that match. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah that's true. the end of him for that match. Mm-hmm. It was done. Like, <laughs> like, when Jeff climbed the 20 foot ladder in the aisleway of WrestleMania 2000 and did a swanton Bubba. 
both those guys were done from the match. Oh, man. And so, by the way, I'm looking at these tweets. You need to go through to Joseph's uh, Twitter feed. I think you're going to have a lot of fun with it. Oh, boy. Yeah, he's making comments oh, about he, he and I are usually pretty simpatico when it comes to stuff like this. Oh, yeah, you are more than you think. Yeah, because, I mean, I like watching good wrestling. Um, oh, yeah, he, I can hey. watch good wrestling everywhere. Here's his take on it. It says, I've, I've been taking a lot of flack for my unfavorable opinion last night's show. I want them to succeed, but the show lacked, lacked story. And if you want to uh, want the average fan to be invested, uh, if you want to gain an audience, uh, story trumps all and was severely lacking. This sounds like you. Have you been reading? Have you been drinking the Joseph Kool Aid this entire time? No wonder you guys get along so well. I actually am Chris to Joseph. Well, what? <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's it's what I always talk about. Yeah, it is. It's what I always talk about because you can see good in ring action fucking everywhere now Mm -hmm. from your local indie to any one of the big four or five promotions Mm -hmm. in the in this on this planet like new japan you can see good wrestling ring of honor you can see good wrestling wwe you can see good wrestling yeah aid you can see good wrestling impact wrestling you can see good wrestling Mm -hmm. i can see that shit anywhere yeah what i want is a good story um, oh, by the way, in, in his original comment, I did, I did find his in, original comment, and I think he alludes to uh, Wardlow's promo being uh, the, the the vignette introducing Wardlow to AEW uh, being a Brian Cage vignette knockoff. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah Although, kinda, a little bit. It was he. He's not entirely wrong, but it was still pretty good. Um, and friend of the show Wardlow, it's good. Good for him. Uh, yeah. Honestly, they, they, that, that dude was, fucking that deserves great. it. Show. That's right. So it was. It was a very, it was, honestly the whole thing was a Lucha Underground ripoff. <laughs> the uh, whole thing, the whole vignette was a Lucha Underground ripoff. Oh, the vignette. Oh, yeah, it was definitely inspired by it at the very yeah, least. Like if you put Brian Cage, if you put Mil Muertes, mm-hmm. if you put any of the bigger guys, hell, even Willie Mack. I'll I accept was, the Willie Mack there too. I was talking. You, before the show, but it just like reminisce of uh, of back alleys and being mugged by luchadors. Just made me miss Lucha Underground. It did a little bit. It did a little bit. Anyways, well, uh, we need to talk about some other stuff here. Uh, Tina, Tina's asking us a specific question. Oh, was it Aubrey, Aubrey Edwards refing the main event? Nice. Very cool. Mm-hmm. Very cool. And uh, her tweet, I think, was uh, the the best. Because she tweeted out uh, a picture of her holding up the AEW title. And she's like, this is what you're seeing. What I'm thinking is, don't drop the belt. Don't drop hmm. the belt. Drop the belt. Don't <laughs> drop the belt. Oh, amazing. Something, honestly, Chris Jericho should have been thinking. Mm-hmm. Oh. <laughs> oh. Too soon. Okay. I, well. I, can drop the, I can drop the gimmick now because it's starting to get heavy. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, uh, uh, by the way, I for if a if there are any policemen watching, this is not the AEW championship. <laughs> ah, you had me fooled. Ah, I know, I know. It is signed by Chris Jericho, though. Jeez, it's geez. close. So, oh, it's signed by Chris Jericho. You know, so, seven. Yeah, nice. So I mean, you know, it all uh, comes around as I well. The gimmick. Hey, if you wanna if you wanna check out the next the next hot thing in pro wrestling, why not check out the indies? That's where a lot of these guys are coming from. You're seeing on the AEW, including Wardlow, and you can see some of that action over at IndieWrestling.us and IndieWrestling.network. Just released uh, from this past weekend. Well, first of all, we have our friends at uh, Premier Wrestling in in uh, Cleveland, Ohio. Uh, Tony, I think you've wrestled for them in the yes. recent past, right? Mm-hmm. A lot of fun stuff going on in Legendary Turner's Hall, uh, which was just featured on NXT with Johnny Gargano, actually. Yep. So um, a lot of good stuff there. Outbreak, which fe- featured a Ring of Honor ring announcer, Nick Lendl, against Dave Kitsch. <laughs> Other ring announcer. Battle of the Voices. Battle of the Voices in physical form <laughs> uh, is now part of your uh, subscription on IndieWrestling.network. Also, the latest releases, RWA Armageddon 2019, including the Crazy street fight with the Rev Ron Hunt, as uh, featured on Optimus Prime over there, if you're on our visuals. Uh, Again, uh, successful St. Jordan Styles. Um, It was crazy. There was a a Terry Funk Mick Foley chair um, invite 
uh, that, that, that kind of threw back. Um, and uh, what did you, you call it? Black Foley or something earlier? Uh, uh, I, it was something. Somebody did. But um, but anyways, um, so it, it was uh, it, it was pretty crazy. Uh, and that one did end with the jump off the ladder ending the match. Mike, spoiler alert. Sure. So, uh, but no, it was a lot of fun. And of course, uh, Black Diamond, Black Diamond Wrestling's full force, uh, from, uh, Sunday where I don't know where he's at, but Ronnie Starks had a title shot on that show and you can see that in its full and so much more. Um, some other friends of the show in some really interesting action. They are all a part of indie wrestling dot network, uh, indie wrestling dot us. Go check it out and check out what's going on. And also just announced, um, uh, we are actually going to be. Uh, filming for some new promotions in Ohio and West Virginia. Um, at least one of them will be on IndieWrestling.us uh, coming up here. So looking for that. The, uh, I believe it's the UXWA out of Brooklyn, Ohio will be a part of. So uh, so can't wait to see what they have. I guess familiar faces are going to be on that show too. So one Ziggy Haim, uh, the Ziggy. newly Christian Ziggy Haim, a former Jinx, is going to be a part of that show. Uh, at least a couple of the Chikara Ants. And uh, I think some talent from AIW. AIW, I said it right, guys. <laughs> I mean it this time. AIW will be a part of that, too. So, How confusing is that going to be? AI and AEW. No, it's, I've been doing it several times on this show. Sorg, I'm actually starting a new promotion uh, myself called AOW. AOW? Oh. Yeah. All Out Wrestling. Ayo. Ayow. Ayow. Ayo. It's painful. It's Ayo. <laughs> It's only going to be um, uh, Guidos from Queens Wrestling. That's mm. it. Uh, Ayo! <laughs> oh. <laughs> that's it. Oh, that's a very localized joke. Um, anyways, Iceman Tony Johnson, you're with us here tonight. Yes. You've been hanging out all night. You've been going with, no, f- with no bang. With no bang. I'm bangless tonight. I'm sorry I didn't offer you a bang. What did you think happened on this show? <laughs> I don't, it was called the Mayhem Show, so I didn't know what I was getting into. That's uh, all right. That's a fair point. We, of course, uh, <laughs> you have never, ever been on this show. Not this show. I never was been on this show. Yes. No. First time. But you've been on the Indie Mayhem Show, so we got into a little bit of your history over there. Um, but hey, man, what's the latest with you? You got a you got a big show this weekend with Rise Wrestling with a Y. Yes. No, uh, it's not all women. No. As cool as that would be for me to see all women wrestle. But intergender. Yes. I've I fought a woman or two in my day. We were just doing Monday Night Rise. Uh, I so will they- never have the phrasing of that. Phrasing. Wrestled a woman. <laughs> that slightly better, yes. Uh, <laughs> I have my wife beater on. I don't know if that's PC. <laughs> we're just throwing it all out but here. But under this shirt, there is a wife beater. <laughs> And that is rules of three comedy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, actually, we were doing Monday Night Rise last night, and we had a June's edition. Uh, Marcus Mann in the chat room over on our indie wrestling Twitch, and uh, and and we were uh, uh, your match with Jinx now Ziggy Haim uh, was from that night. So so that's been a kind of a, a common occurrence over there. Wrestling, Jinx? well, yeah, wrestling Jinx for one thing. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've had. Uh, I think two two or three matches with her now mm-hmm. involved uh tag match me in London against her and Sean Phoenix. Uh we had the I think it was four or five person match. Oh the the contest of champions I think it was. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and she was involved in that as well with PB and Lawless and then we had a one-on-one match as well. So it kind of becoming a an ongoing thing. You guys have a, um, a you you have had a, I, I think I cited before the show uh, had one of my favorite matches at Rise where I, I knew something different was happening. Where you guys had a thirty minute Iron Man match. Um, that's a that's a phrase I usually mess up, Mike. Um, last year, I believe it was you and Matt Connard, wasn't it? Yes. Uh, very familiar with him as well. Uh, Black Diamond. We had a, a two out of three falls match. Mm-hmm. And then through Rise, uh, we were the semifinals of the uh, Grand Champion Contenders tournament uh, whenever the belt was being introduced. Mm-hmm. So, so tell me a little bit about you. You're you're mostly working uh, Rise and Black Diamond these days, right? Yes. And there's a little and shirt. then uh, Premier as well. And Premier Wrestling when- too. So uh, you 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 really kind of uh, uh, leaned into uh, when you're part of the main event 
um, faction over there as part of Rise Wrestling, and uh, and you, you you have your own hotline yes. over there too. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's really taken off. All the wrestlers call me. Uh, Mar- Marcus, kind of, um, um, you were kind of given an opportunity with that because I think like like Colin Delaney like had to cancel the show or something. Yes, so yes. You, you 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 really kind of took that that chance to do something different. Yeah, uh, when I was told Colin wasn't going to be able to make it, um, I just saw his opportunity to do something creative, something that hasn't really been done before. Mm-hmm. And it really just grew, kind of like myself. Yeah. Excellent. So, um, so we we have to bring up something that was brought up in the chat when we had Honey Badger on the on the Twitch feed a couple weeks ago. Because I I, remember, I think we talked about this in the in the um um in on on the show that you were on for Indie Mayhem show. When I first saw you, mm-hmm. my initial review of Rise Wrestling was, "Hey, it was a really good show." But what was with the guy with the bear blanket? Yeah, um, I actually got that from my time at, well, it's Fight Society now. Yeah, but it was so, PWX. But, but, but it was a, it was like a a blanket towel with like a print of a bear on it. Yes, and I didn't catch your name. <laughs> so you just saw just bear. Yeah, just bear. like I'm just like who is who is you know guy in the black tights didn't catch his name. I don't think they're throwing the graphics on the screen yet. I don't think they had the screen yet. No, which is very so. helpful when you have everybody's like face and, and, and name blazoned on a screen behind them. So you're like, OK, this is this guy. Yeah. And you usually you just hear of... the name once and then it's <laughs> that's like the worst thing. It. It, it, I was talking about all the indies that I've been to this year, like all across the country. I can't tell you half their names. Never learned them. Never will. Can't find them. There's guys that I bought a T-shirt from that I can't find on Facebook. <laughs> that's how bad it is. Yeah. So but anyways, um. So so, anyways, so so, what was that? So were you like, were you the bear before the Iceman? Uh, not before. Um, at PWX, it was kind of a time where I was there, kind of doing my thing, but not really getting traction. I was still relatively new. So I was walking through Walmart one time, and I saw this this like almost like Under Armour tight bear shirt with the bear eating like like a trout type of thing and it just made me laugh (laughs) and i was like they're not really so it's one of those like hunting fishing kind of things yeah sort of it was it was in that section of walmart and i just remember kind of laughing out loud and i was like oh nothing's really planned for me there's nothing really going on i'm just gonna wear this to the ring because it makes me laugh and then from there you're just trying anything at that point yeah it was like there's nothing worse that they can do or it can happen so i was like i might as well just go out and have fun with it and then from there it turned into well what other bear accessories can i find (laughs) so then i found (laughs) then i found the blanket and i was like oh cool it's like my cape and then i don't i don't know if you guys (laughs) so you're it's like it it feel it felt like um like when you're a kid and you just get your like blanket you know your your transformers blanket or whatever and pretend you're superman yes was like, the was the impression i got yeah like you just tie it around your neck you're like oh now i can fly right mm-hmm. and then i don't know if you guys are familiar with the store kroger a little yeah. bit yes okay because I, I don't know like the it's kind of region a little more regional and it's is it more grocery store or more super walmart does it depend uh, it's like- definitely more grocery. Okay. Like you're not really buying clothes there. Yeah. But for some reason they had like a bin of like animal uh, hats for like winter time. So it's like the hat and then it would have like the little uh, mitt con- like combo. Mm-hmm. And then of course there was a bear one. There are pictures somewhere of this. I have to find this. Uh, I know I've I've been photographed in everything shirt, blanket and hat before. <laughs> Uh, I'm sure it's on the internet somewhere. Oh, we have to find that. We know we'll have to we'll have to, we'll do a dig for this, and we'll have a, a a good post of it on the group, perhaps. Uh, so was I catching like the the I was say the bear the, vibe, the, the tail end of the bear vibe, basically. Well, in my in my brain, see, this is this is where it gets dangerous because I didn't tell commentary, I didn't really inform anyone. I so was doing nobody this. had any unless they were at PWX from like 2000. 13 to maybe 15 and saw it in action they wouldn't have known but essentially i was going into a tournament so i was like oh man this could be like my finn balor moment like (laughs) i like like how he has the demon thing 
when it's like when when it's a different mindset so in your mind were you going to eventually come out the way the beast man does now where he basically has like a bear head that he wears it in a skin a skin kind of thing is that in your mind was that like going to be like the culmination of of the bear ice man tony johnson well it definitely wouldn't have looked as cool as, <laughs> as his gear because that really is cool but essentially it was just like oh man maybe i can embody like a more animalistic like side of myself if i wear animal garb but like without telling commentary or anyone else it just seemed like the most random ensemble you could think of but in my head it was going somewhere i want to ask about have you started invoking the bear hug as your finisher no i never did i kept my finisher the same the ice pick kick because it works i i feel like i feel like the bear hug should be incorporated in there now though but i don't really use the bear anymore yeah that was a couple years ago yeah Oh, oh oh okay yeah like he's really kind of grown into other versions of himself since yes okay. the, yeah i don't think the i don't think the bear hug is gonna work with the rise situation no no okay. so um so um i, I think it's it's hilarious that you to me because i heard commentary from this other match uh, that you said you found that stuff at walmart because that was the illusion you um you you had a recent match with um uh we know infectionally as ju- judo uh the ronin stevie labelle who is uh, judo i believe like he knows yeah, judo, he's an actual brown that's belt. the whole point you guys had a match up in springdale with rise wrestling and uh you came out in a well your gi yes. which um looks very much like a bathrobe uh in some circles it would be a bathrobe but when right. i put it on it becomes a dangerous weapon okay oh yeah that looked really dangerous uh <laughs> Uh, this was a, this was a fun match because there was allusions to to that that you stole that from your local hotel. Um, and, and why would I stay in Springdale? I I, I don't know. I, if I don't know a hotel why I in Springdale. That. I mean, it's kind of it's it's small. There's a power plant and there's a, there's no cell service. So, which yeah. I'm pretty sure it's because of the power plant, which really scares me. <laughs> so, um, did you learn anything about judo during that night? Um, I learned that the gi is everything, and okay. when I was wearing my gi, none of my moves were effective. Yes, but when I put his gi on, for some reason, I became a lot more dangerous. <laughs> you did. <laughs> it was it was a new style to see you uh, uh, hanging with um, uh, his gi on and all his patches, and that I think he learned he actually earned. So um, uh, I earned him too when I took him off <laughs> off of him. <laughs> It was like a Pokemon battle. It was like a Pokemon battle. I just took his badges, and now I'm the Pokemon master. Oh, geez. Um, so uh, a lot of fun uh, uh, lately with that. Uh, what do you got coming up here? Uh, we have the tournament Saturday, uh, first round of the tournament. I will be wrestling Keith Hot, mm-hmm. and I'm very familiar with Keith. We both started together. He was part of my training class, so it's not someone unfamiliar going into it i feel really confident in being able to keep my win streak at rise yeah you guys part of the insurgents over at black diamond wrestling or the big announcement uh, that happened this past weekend too yes uh we announced the type of match we will be having with the resurgence or as they like to be known as the good guys yes and it's going to be a war games the good guys have de- requested more demanded to be on the show by the way on this show. On this show, yes. Well, they, well, they said the show. I didn't say which show. Maybe I'll put them on the tech podcast, too. Ah. Uh, <laughs> I'd like to see them come up with some technology things for the awesome cast. That could be interesting. They were very confusing. Who knows? Uh, we'll give them the Pornhub assignment, too. Uh, so, so you got War Games coming up in the cage uh, up here in October in Black Diamond. It'll be November. November. Actually, I'm sorry. Yes. I'm getting my months mixed up. I know it's weird because they're the next show is october but we're yes doing that well in it's october so we're having a tag team buried alive match mm. so that's gonna be fun uh a grave for two grave for two yes a couple's grave what do they call <laughs> grave this? for two that wow that's a wwe network uh thing like how they have the table for three it's grave under it's two. undertaker yeah. in a grave with someone doing an interview style thing with them oh okay oh i like it I, I think the only time I like, can recall something like that was there was one time there was a double casket match. 
Mm. Oh, was it or, against like it, what, like Big Show and Boss Man or something? No, like trip. It was Triple H in a handicap match. It was a handicap <laughs> casting match mm. against Midian and Viscera. The last time <laughs> I, I've seen a three way casket match that involved a guy that later became Elias. Well, yeah, I saw one too. It was called Grave Consequences, Sorg. It was, apparently, that's what this one's called too. Um, <laughs> so there you go. If it ain't broke, don't fix it, right? I, I gotta tell the first the first match I went to Black Diamond was a a buried alive match with was Sean Phoenix and Steve Resnick. Steve, Sean, Sean, Sean Resnick. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, sir. <laughs> new new Black Diamond champion. Um, and uh, the, the, the that is an impressive setup they have there. Yeah. For Rick goes for, all out. For when those. you say, "Hey, an indie company is going to do buried alive," you don't expect wh- what you saw there. You think like a little two inch like yeah. mound and just like oh, yeah, put some yeah. dirt on them. We yeah. Like you, you just think as well. It's not going to stack up to like. But it was like it. It's it's a it's legit because I've done one. Yeah. I think I was one of the first Black Diamond matches that. It did that, and it's it's legit. Like you go in there, you're probably five six feet down yeah. when you when in the drop. So yeah, so looking forward to that. And of course, please, you know, if you're in the area, come on down. Uh, there's always the first Sundays of the month here uh, in Benwood, West Virginia, just south of Wheeling, West Virginia, where uh, where SmackDown comes. I know from time to time. So uh, no WWE does come to town in that neck of the woods, and of course, be part of the Indie Wrestling Network in the coming months. So with that, hey, want to give a shout out. You had a little bit here early. We're feeding our our crew here through the night, uh, supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza. Our friends at Slice on Broadway, sliceonbroadway.com. Here in Beachview, Carnegie, East End, PNC Park, home of the Pittsburgh Pirates. Are they done? Are we are we out of that yet? Are we in playoff season? Because there's no way we're in playoffs, right? I don't that think doesn't the happen. No, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not up on the sports sorry, ball. There, there is no way the Pirates are making the playoffs. No, no way. Not even rough, a chance. Rough, rough, Ugh. rough year. Uh, like, unless the other four teams ahead of them in their division all suddenly catch like really contagious diseases. <laughs> well, the measles hmm. are going around. So, yeah. Um. Anyways, well, that's they can lose their winning record at the steakhouse. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> that steakhouse is just taking it dreams away from everybody. <laughs> Um, but at least if you're having a bad time at the ball field, you can rub some pizza in it. And if you are somewhere else, of course, uh, Slice started with one location here right up the street from our studio at Sorgatron Media. And uh, you can uh, help us, help them with their global expansion. Uh, find a Broadway Avenue in your town, wherever it is across the country, because we know you guys are everywhere. And uh, take a picture of that. Uh, tweet pgh underscore slice on the twitter and let them know you'd like a slice on your broadway and let them know you heard about it on the wrestling mayhem show we'll be back with a big question and more with the Iceman tony johnson and we haven't had one mr freeze joke from mad mike yet i'm <laughs> impressed i'm impressed uh we'll see you in a moment after this with katie sidekick media services we are your sidekick in business for social media video production and more Find out more at SidekickMediaServices.com. We are back. It is the Wrestling Mayhem Show. The Iceman, Tony Johnson, is still with us, hanging out with us. He's getting more relaxed. Look, he's, he's, he's slouched. He's relaxed. It's almost my bedtime. It's almost his bedtime, and he's on that comfy, comfy couch. Mad he's Mike's keeping sh- cool. Mad Mike. Mm. Oh, ho, ho. Uh, Mad Mike is joining us, of course, from his uh, underground bunker in Beacon, New York. Yep. Uh, that concludes above ground. Oh, <laughs> technically, Sorg, you can't tell them it's underground because that will be the first place people look. Oh, got misdirection! You. Exactly. Yes. Uh, anyways, it is the big question. A lot of stuff happened. A lot of Chicago-based things happened with AEW All Out and Starcast. Seeing some of those clips, um, I saw some tweets Friday. Random stuff going on. A lot of news coming out of that. A lot of comments. A lot of people saying stuff. That other people don't like, or do like, or are interested in, and part of that is somebody named CM Punk uh, uh, returned to a wrestling-related something or other. Uh, so he was there at Starcast. He was. I did see a little bit of him talking about that time that The Rock called him while he was at the Staples Center, uh, and how he was in an elevator, and that's why he didn't answer. <laughs> so okay, 
Um, also, I- interestingly, um, there was uh, I always like I-, I do like that like Tony Khan, who's basically the Vince McMahon of this operation, um, um, does a like twenty minute press conference and basically takes all questions. Right, um, mm-hmm. I appreciate that. Uh, but he was somebody asked him a question and brought up a good point that they were in Chicago. CM Punk was at their event at Starcast, and this is probably the first pro wrestling event in in years in Chicago where CM Punk was not chanted. <laughs> so, wow. um, with that, my question, and who knows? I, I don't know if there was any illusions about him getting back in the room. I'm sure he was asked in that thing, and I probably have to pay fifteen dollars to fight to find out. Um, <laughs> but uh, I'm not going to do that. Uh, but. <laughs> Ideally, if CM Punk were to come back, it's been several years. There's a lot of new talent out there. There's a lot of dream matches. Doesn't matter what promotion. Who would you like CM Punk to come back initially? Let's say he's in a, you know, the Rock or John Cena type of situation that he's going to come back for one thing. Who would you like that to be against? Oh. Hmm. That's interesting. Because I haven't thought about CM Punk wrestling in a very long time. No, no, we just kind of groaned at the chance at at the shows. Mm-hmm. I know. I just which went... I still I still do. You, you do because it's it's kind of it's kind of whatever, right? I um, I got one. Okay. Uh, I've never really seen CM Punk do intergender wrestling, mm. but uh, him and Becky Lynch, I'm yeah. sure they would cut some interesting promos at each other. And just that dynamic of who really is the man and who's who's the best, the best in the world would yeah. be an interesting look. Hmm. Hmm. I think along with that, um, I I would like to see Punk and uh, Omega. That's a okay. Good one. It's kind of like okay. a not thought of about when he was around. I love Tina started with uh, John Moxley and CM Punk and then just went to John Moxley and Johnny Gargano for some reason. <laughs> like, that's not the question, but I appreciate it. Mm-hmm. I, I like that idea, but that, you know. Um, I think she meant to put Punk first, Gargano, but. Oh, all right. I got mine. Champa. Oh, jeez, mm. that would be so good. Yeah. Jeez. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That'd be really great. Yeah, Pumpkin Champa. I, I, I really honestly, those guys wouldn't even have to like wrestle. I really, they, they could just, they could just talk at each other for oh, yeah. six months, and yeah. I'd be riveted. Just Twitter, just Twitter, yep. just Twitter. They wouldn't mm-hmm. even have to show up on need, screen. I don't need a match. I just want a Twitter feud between the two of you. Like that's how Jericho could almost do that for me too. Um, why are you holding back, Punk versus Luchasaurus? <laughs> from Matt Carlin's. Not wrong. Not wrong at all. Well, um, I mean, then why are we really holding back? Punk versus Orange Cassidy. Who cares the least about wrestling? Oh, I like that. Oh, <laughs> oh I like Who that. Who cares the least about wrestling? Um, uh, It's official. The all-out crowd was so dead they couldn't even be bothered to <laughs> chant CM Punk. <laughs> wow. Wow. Uh, there you go. CM Punk versus Marco Stunt. Mm-hmm. Or, you know, I, and I'm sure this is a match that's probably happened, but I've never seen it. CM Punk versus Christopher Daniels. I feel like that would have had to have happened uh, in days. I yeah, think it happened at some point. But. To be fair, I think that is a match on the best of CM Punk offering that we have on digital download. Oh, <laughs> really? Yeah. So, um, <laughs> oh, you know what? Come true. Hey, it's probably a good time for me to throw that on the Indie Wrestling Network now that I think about it. Yeah. So, sure. Why not? Yeah. <laughs> Let's, um, I'm sure it's on our YouTube page, to be honest. Uh, no, that is because you got to think those, those guys were both like early Ring of Honor guys. Mm-hmm. Like, it's happened. They may have wrestled at IWC for but all you know. Th- that's what I'm saying. No, I think, I think it was an IWC okay. one that we have in the catalog. So, um, yeah. Anyways, uh, sorry, I still see I'm, my headlines from wrestling are just ridiculous right now when I look over here. Um, maybe we'll touch on them in a moment here. Uh, and I forgot what, where I was going with this. Um, but anyways, uh, I, I, I do. We will, I think we will see CM Punk wrestle again. I don't think we will. You don't? Nope. 
I, I, I think, think this is I think the he's done. I think this is the door back in, right? And I don't know that I'll be in WWE, right. but I feel like there's somebody that will pay him enough to come back, and that's AEW. I don't know if he has a passion for wrestling. That's the only thing. No, but he probably likes money. And I don't know what he's doing that. Uh, he's in movies and stuff. I don't think is he's he real... in movies and stuff. I think yeah. A- AJ just wrote a book, I believe. He's probably living off that too. <laughs> her, well, some of her no. money. And plus, yeah. he he also saved his money. Yeah, yeah. He saved his and uh, Sorg. I am seeing IWC uh, October nineteenth, two thousand one. CM Punk beat Christopher Daniels. Ooh, match mm-hmm. results. Spoiler. And also, his last match in IWC. Was a triple threat: CM Punk, Christopher Daniels, and Low Key Ooh. in uh in um IWC Showdown in U Town Two. <laughs> U Town must be Union Town, right? Yes, it is. Yes, right. yes, it, yes is. it is. I've never heard that, that was slang. on that was on that was on April thirtieth, two thousand five. I still don't know where Showdown in Turkey Town. Like, I don't know where Turkey Town is. That was another show that they would do. Like, they did a couple of them, I think. Like, like oh, uh. It's at the Turkey Town VFD in West Newton, Pennsylvania. Oh, mm. West Newton! That's our debut. Yeah, oh. apparently, apparently CM Punk wrestled Dean Radford there. Wow, the Radicator himself. <laughs> yeah, I just brought up all of CM Punk's matches in IWC. <laughs> that was that your Google search? No, I, I went. I, I I have my methods. Okay, he's he's having a lot more success than your Pornhub search earlier. Yeah, technology one page. That's right. Safe for work. <laughs> Safe for work. Come on, guys. Uh, uh, what's that? Oh yeah, Eddie Gr- Eddie Guerrero and CM Punk had a match in Monroeville. Yes, they did. Um, I believe in two thousand two. Uh, yes, indeed. Yes, uh, people would often ask me if I had the VHS tape of that, and I was like, no, I do not. I don't know and, who does. And I did not. Wow. CM Punk, AJ Styles, and Christopher Daniels. He had a lot of good matches in IWC. Mm-hmm. Dude, that was I mean, the early the early um the early matches when him and Colt were getting around, like Norm Connors was one of the first guys that like paid to have him travel in. Yeah, I can I can see why. And um I mean look um, I mean all those guys. Mm-hmm. And, and that uh, early... he also had a match against Fab Fabulous John McChesney. Yes, at Two Brindy Four. One big league John McChesney that uh, is one of the owners of Revenge Pro these days. And Sterling James Keenan, whoever that guy is. Yeah, now. no yeah. one knows. He he'd be a good guy for grade for two. Corey Graves. <laughs> yeah. Grade for two. Yeah, I think that's a grade for one. Yeah, mm. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I oh some bad some bad jokes there. <laughs> bad jokes there. Just I love it. Back. I, I love Tina on the other side of the country knows knows about Norm Connors days. Like that, that's <laughs> that's that's great. That's great. Um, <laughs> as a, at this rate, Sorg may have found Alex. A lo- Alex yeah, no. yeah. He's no. like, hey, 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 Mike. I could use a logger for the database for um, uh, for Indie Wrestling Network. No, you have experience. You'll, you'll have to match my rate. I have to match your rate. <laughs> Your podcast rate or your actual logger rate? My actual logger rate. Then I can give you a future endeavor letter from IndieWrestling.us as well. <laughs> That'd be great. <laughs> oh, oh, boy. Oh, boy. We never let anybody go from this show. So that hasn't happened yet. So uh, anyways, I think I'm supposed to do a thing here. And let me double check that. I believe I'm supposed to give a plug. No, we just plugged that bit. Hold on a second. You know what? Forget it. There's no producer here. We're off. <laughs> Mike, what do you want to talk about? <laughs> um, I actually do have something to plug. Okay. I, I do have something to plug uh, for for um, for sports ball people. Oh, uh, we are doing. We're not talking about the no, Pirates again. Sor- no, uh, Sorg. We're doing a Mayhem Fantasy Football Pick'em. Oh, that. Yeah, we're doing a Mayhem Fantasy Football Pick'em League. Uh, the first week of the NFL starts on Thursday. This is when these so, posts come up in the Facebook group, and I think I'm in the wrong Facebook group. <laughs> yeah, but I, I put them in there because because this anyone can join. Mm-hmm. Anyone can join. Uh, it's gonna be fun. I am going to because we also have like a regular fantasy football league that is going to be very competitive. I feel it's already been very competitive, mm-hmm. just with the trash talk. 
and I'm going to have prizes for each leak. Where is the trash talk happening, by the way? Uh, the trash talk was happening during the draft. Oh, okay. Yeah, during the draft. I was going to say, is there anywhere? Um, are you? Is there anywhere where the, where this trash talk is going to be made public or happen in in an open forum? Oh, I'm probably going to talk so much shit when I win every week. Okay. Okay. Yeah. On here. On here. On okay. this show. Yeah. Yeah. So don't worry about that. <laughs> also related, uh, I believe Matt Carlin still needs to watch the league. Yes, he does. But um, but yeah. So if you want to sign up for the Pick'em League, there's plenty of spots open. I don't think there's a limit. Mm-hmm. Um, a Pick'em League is basically you just look once a week at all the games that are being played, and you pick who wins, and you rate how sure you are on a scale of like one to sixteen. Okay, and it just figures it out. So, yep, and uh, I there will be prizes for the winners. And this is of, in and that is, it's week to week. You don't have to dedicate to the entire um, season. Correct? No. No. Okay. Well, it, I mean, it is for the whole season, but you like for the Pick'em League, you only have to check once a week. Okay. Yeah, you just have to make your picks once a week. You pick every game all at once. Mm-hmm. Boom, and you're done. Good. So you just roll in every Wednesday, pick your games, and then you're done. Or hell, you can roll in Tuesdays while the show's going on. And I remind people. <laughs> That's true, too. There you go. There is a non-wrestling wrestling thing. It is a community thing, I guess. <laughs> so... Um, so I've been distracted all night by, uh, headlines. Now they're about Star Wars. I don't know. <laughs> I did see the Cody Rhodes. I prefer, uh, Outback Ste- Steakhouse, uh, Twitter hitting my, uh, feed over here. Um, in other related or other just around the wrestling world, uh, news, Marty Skrull's Ring of Honor contract is expiring in November. November. I wonder what's going to happen next. Um, he's probably going to go to AEW. Yes, that's why I'm alluding to. Um, yeah. Also, isn't there a pay per view in November for them? Yep. Named Full Gear. Full Gear. Full what, Gear. What, what What is up with these pay per view names? I don't know. They got to come up Full with Full Gear. What does that even? Mean? I mean, they ran wanna... out of like casino references. I guess. Yes, I guess so. Um, and also, um, I, do we really want the the world where like uh, we had three pay per views in a row named after Phil Collins songs? I actually prefer that. You like that? You like the Genesis um, era of TNA? There's a Susudio mm-hmm. pay per view. A <laughs> W <laughs> Susudio. <laughs> yes. Let's name them oh all. God, that'd be great. We'll just start naming them all after Fozzie songs now that he's champ. Mm. Well. Is he really champ? <laughs> right. Okay. <laughs> now that Jericho is champ ish, he's a beltless champ. That's right. It's again, a very indie kind of thing. <laughs> We've all been there. We've all been that that indie promotion where it's like, and this one's for the so and so championship, and everybody's like, or you've had to hold where the, is it? or you've had to hold a different championship belt for that night because someone didn't bring it. Oh, you've been it. at that. You've seen I've those. seen, I've seen those. Yeah. I've seen the ones where they bring the, bring a belt out, but they left it in the belt bag. Oh, mm-hmm. Oh, geez. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, seen those, seen those, you know, what's behind here. I don't have to show you people. And then just like, give it back. Yeah. It, there's been a lot of like very judge worthy belt decisions. <laughs> In indie wrestling, and apparently in, in in other wrestling too. How do you lose the belt? You know what? I guess they really kind of. I, I'm back to the belt. I'm sorry. Um, H- H- Hangman Page just posted mm-hmm. uh, three hours ago a picture of a um, a bandana in a video game, and it says it hides your identity while committing crimes, <laughs> and a picture of him wearing a bandana. What? He's so he I have a feeling. It. I have a feeling they're going to spin this into a story. Okay. Instead of just make instead of just making Jericho look like an irresponsible moron. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, I obviously, like I said, the the, the the hot tub promo on finding this. I mean, it, it's going to be the, the the best stuff comes from accidents, right? Um, Shockmaster. <laughs> Okay, not all of the best. Uh, okay, no incidents always turn into the best stuff, but the Charlotte best moments Flair. come from. I mean, recently, you know, I mentioned that last. <laughs> Thank you. What? I think they it's don't Rick hurt. Flair. I assume. 
<laughs> I, like, uh, I, I, sure. I, I, I make assumptions. Planned and unplanned. Oh, there you go. Jericho pulled a reverse flare. <laughs> um, mm, I, I, anyways, <laughs> I had a point. The best things come from the action. best yes. things are or- like one of the best are organic. Matches, are one organic. of the best, best matches I've seen recently was from uh, uh, you know I mentioned that last man standing match with Beastman and Thomas Mathis, it, which stemmed from Thomas Mathis legitimately getting hurt in a match. Yes, and it turned into like a really good feud, feud for that promotion and a, and a very memorable match for them over there, right? Mm-hmm. So I mean, like like things like that, you know, reactions. That Kofi Kingston is kind of the best accident of the year, you know, a very. Des- yeah. You know, I mean, it is. I mean, and he, he admits that too, right? Like, uh, when was a recent like twenty four sevens or something? You know, he's just talking about how you know crazy it is. He's like, he's like, I'm like, not even supposed to be here. Wouldn't be if it wasn't for this, you know. And they can they can play off that, and it's been great storylines. And kind of questioning that, and we've seen with the Randy Orton stuff lately, right? Um, it's a good story, and it's it's real, you know. And it now. Three months from now, when Jericho's feuding with whoever, it'd be like, listen, man, you can't even keep the belt for 24 hours. Physically. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. And yeah. you know what? You can have someone roll back with the original title mm-hmm. and say, I was the one that stole it from you, not Hangman Page. Mm-hmm. You, you can have, and that can be literally anyone. I can imagine there can, they can either purchase or already have a backup title belt. I would assume so. I would but imagine. You, but you, Sorg, you know who could have stolen the belt? Red Heart. Storyline? No, I'm I'm thinking a villain might have done it. Uh, Marty uh... Scroll. I'm just saying that if that's the way you want to go. It's in the name. Yep. It's right there. A very enterprising villain. Mm-hmm. Uh, by the way, holy fuck PCO. <laughs> <laughs> I think it might have been more than a week ago, but holy shit! Like, mm-hmm. I, and I didn't see the match. I think it was from Supercard, wasn't it? Um, where it, I just know it looked like his eyeball was about to fall out uh, in the pictures I saw online. Um, I mean, just everybody yelling, uh, "He's not human!" Speaking of uh, really bad injuries, um, uh, vibes go out to G Raver, who had to deal with um, a. Uh, pretty vicious injury i think he collapsed and was rushed to the hospital uh, he's been doing updates it sounds like he's doing okay um sent him some good vibes and he gave, gave a what's up back so um it, it you know he uh, i always worry about his g raver i get an update but look what g raver did this weekend kind of thing <laughs> and uh good to hear that he's doing well after that spell and um and once again reminded fuck jim Cornette. Mm. oh yeah definitely fuck jim did Cornette. you see g raver's response no, uh, it was yeah. it was kind of my favorite response to a Jim Cornette. Uh, he said, "I can't wait to see you at a convention so I can spit in your mouth." <laughs> <laughs> it's, I mean, that's so G Raver, which I think is a sitcom now. Um, uh, <laughs> it's the adult version he, of that. So if raver. he could, see, yeah. if he could see through time, he probably wouldn't have done that. That's so Raver. <laughs> that's so great. There it is. Oh, Disney man. Channel presents that's so Raver. <laughs> he just like. Barrels through the front door, like hardcore style. Have you seen? They did a like a a you know eighties nineties sitcom style. Uh, the the uh, Adventures of MT Ocean and Beastman from when you guys were at West Banco for Black Diamond. I didn't see. That. You've never seen those? No. Oh, those are resurfacing on Facebook next week. Um, but they did that whole like kind of title sequence with the with the pauses and everything. Like I want that, but just with like really horrific like G Raver stunts. <laughs> you know, of just all the crazy shit he's done over the last couple of years. So, anyways, um, show title that's so raver. <laughs> yes, it is. Thank you, and we're gonna take a note because I am self-producing this show. <laughs> so you're gonna have to wait for me to t- type that. Uh, in the meantime, Iceman, what is interesting you in pro wrestling these days? Uh, really, for me, it's been Rise Wrestling. Uh, Black Diamond Wrestling and the occasional premier wrestling visit uh, for me. Um, I'm really not the biggest um, as far as watching other promotions and other levels. I mean, I'll catch the uh, things occasionally, but really I'm just focused on what I need to do Mm -hmm. depending on where I am. Mike, anything else uh, popping up this week? Um, Not this week, but... uh... The match a couple weeks ago on NXT 
Keith Lee versus Dominic Dijakovic. Oh, they're always oh, because uh, uh, he was injured for a little bit, wasn't he? Yeah, but oh, brother. Oh, jeez. Oh, brother. Like, I saw a post online where the match was just broken down into gifts. Have you seen these guys? And I'm like, okay, I need I've to actually. Keith I need, Lee. Yeah. I need to actually watch this match. And, oh, yeah. boy. Yep. Oh, boy. It's, it's, it's real good. It's it's real real good. Those guys are like this is like this is gotta be like the fifth time they fought on NXT so far, and they just um, like I think it's only th- it's probably only like the third. Yeah, I want to say the third time, but and they can just, just keep going, and that's okay. They're gonna fight so often, they're gonna end up being a tag team because mm. that's what happens. Probably, like Cesaro yeah. and Sheamus. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Oh, and I did learn that Sheamus um, is on the mend. He's not going into refereeing like. Uh, like I'd initially that was thought. A, that was a weird rumor. Yeah, the rumor to came me. because the rumor came because he took a picture of himself in a WWE referee's outfit, <laughs> but it's for that movie that they're doing on Netflix. Oh, yes, that's why. <laughs> <laughs> and yes, Tina, the top rope Spanish fly between with uh, Keith Lee and Dominic Dijakovic. These guys are large, large gentlemen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You've they're, seen, they're, you've seen, you've seen Keith, Keith Lee. Lee. Yes. Like Dijak is is a huge guy too, and, and it's, a Spanish it's fly? insane. And wow. doing a Spanish fly, I don't think yeah. any of them are a little Spanish. <laughs> oh no, no, that's that's the that's the mainland of Spain. Oh okay, <laughs> that that's not neighboring islands. That's the mainland. <laughs> gotcha, gotcha. Oh, boy. Anyways, um, I don't know what to do next with that. I'm still. <laughs> somebody, somebody, Impact Wrestling was arrested. Right? Oh, the, the wait, who in Impact Wrestling was arrested? Oh, that, I dropped that headline at the beginning of the show. Oh, who was wasn't it? it Rocka Khan or something? Oh, that's right. Yeah, yes. Rocka Khan. Rocka Khan. Yeah, yeah. I didn't, I didn't read the rest of it, but it was. She's right, not with them anymore. But it's right beside the Chris Jericho's belt stolen, and it's just hilarious to me a little bit. <laughs> uh, so. Anyways, well, it, yeah, this had former Impact Wrestling. There's oh, lot- and we we should also mention Jazz returned to AEW. Listen, um, could Jazz? Did you think Jazz needed to be more badass and look? Jazz looked like she just joined the Dora Milaje, <laughs> and I am on Black the Panther. Fuck- oh, thank you, <laughs> Black Sword Panther cards. <laughs> yeah, she looked like fucking Okoye, and I'm like, yes, I know, I, never- I am here for it. And immediately, I wanted her to win, and she did not last long in that match at all. Mm. I never caught the. I never. I never absorbed the name. It was just badass women in Black Panther. Yes, to me. Yep. So. That, that's actually what Dora Milaje turns <laughs> out to do. Okay. Okay. And Wakanda, that's what yes. did for badass, badass, badass women. Women and yeah. Yep. <laughs> we'll kick your ass. Jeez, <laughs> I got a couple aunts that are, that fit that bill. So yeah. oh yeah, I've seen it. You're just like, oh, this is familiar. <laughs> yeah. This is Christmas to me. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, I don't know if Jazz is signed by AEW. I don't oh. think she is. I just want Jazz versus Awesome Kong now, mm. please. Mm-hmm. I just, I just want it now. By the way, after watching Awesome Kong, is when I'm watching. I'm about halfway through Glow season three. No spoilers. Uh, no spoilers. Okay, then no I will spoilers. not say. I've not started yet. <laughs> mm, 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 mm. I I am behind on many shows. Oh, dude, don't get me started. I still need to get through that Stranger Things and that Jessica Jones. Yep. But uh, I'm 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 working backwards. I'm working okay. backwards until new shit comes out. If they if they if they drop another Shira season next weekend, I'm fucked. <laughs> <laughs> it's my current Voltron. Uh, okay. Anyways, uh, guys, what did you learn from wrestling this week, <sighs> or even this show? Don't leave your belt at the steakhouse. Don't leave your belt at the steakhouse. <laughs> Don't trust the limo driver. Right. Mm-hmm. Okay. Where to, Jericho? <laughs> <laughs> it was Mark the whole time. <laughs> Undertaker, Undertaker Mark Calloway is Jericho. <laughs> Undertaker Mark Calloway. Mad Mike, what'd you learn from wrestling this week? I learned that uh, Xavier Woods makes a hell of an iconic. Oh, jeez. Did you see that? <laughs> oh, jeez. It was Woods it, and it, was it Big E? Was no, it? no, 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 no. Everyone's uh, all Who the was dirt- with him? It's someone he was just with a dragon Con. Oh, it's just another dude. Yeah, they were dressed as the Iconics and going around. And Woods just, ju- is just going around doing this. Saying, you gotta be joking me. You 
gotta be joking me. Just all around Dragon Con. It is amazing um, and um, ridiculous. It's it's so pitch perfect. Like I hope that's actually Billy and Peyton's outfits that he just <laughs> <laughs> that are incredibly stretched out right now. Um, related to Xavier Woods. Um, I watched, they had, not a 24-7, but they had a day of special on SummerSlam they just released. Mm-hmm. And they had him in these pictures where he got his hair done and, and he's, he, he got he, he got done up like Stevie Wonder. Yes. Yeah. And I can't remember if he actually came out at SummerSlam with nope. Kofi. He didn't. Nope. So he, he was talking. So he he talk- did for one backstage segment. Okay. So he... <laughs> he Said he sat in the chair for like it was like something like six hours or something getting this whole thing done. Like they look up and see like Stevie when he's like, I'm not on this show. There might be a slight chance I come out with Kofi later on the show. Like, who knows? Yep, basically. Right. But I don't care because I'm gonna do this for the chance that I could go out with him and be on television dressed as Stevie Wonder. Mm-hmm. And so that me and my mother <laughs> And my family will laugh about this, and <laughs> nobody else will understand. And I'm just like, Xavier Woods, That's he's awesome. a gentleman, like in a he's, nutshell, right? He's, he's, That's why we love him. Yeah, yeah, he's fantastic. But Jeez. his Pitch Perfect iconic is just, oh my god, mm-hmm. I I about lost he's it. He's been working I, on that. Yeah. Have they been on a up, up, down, down? Oh, oh, because them you, doing I, wrestling trash I, talk has got God. to be amazing. Or do you need to see um, the Iconics on Up, Up, Down, Down? The yes, Iconics do. on Up, Up, Down, Down are almost as good as the Riot Squad on Up, Up, Down, Down. Oh, yeah. The riot, th- There's a whole 45-minute video of the Riot Squad playing each other in Wheel of Fortune on Up, Up, Down, Down. Ooh. Oh, yeah. I heard about that. It's great. And, and they all have... Um, it, <laughs> They all have nicknames, obviously. Mm-hmm. The only one that's sticking out in my head right now, Liv Morgan. Her nickname is Daddy. <laughs> okay. Hmm. All right. it's, because, it's because her real last name is daddy wow. But, But it's just like they say it every time. Like they know that they're like, call me Daddy. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds way more awkward coming from Liv Morgan. We um we got a uh, well I'm sure this will be the show art or something uh, this week but we did get a submission. Oh. Uh, we got uh, a nice picture of the bear Tony Johnson. Hey, someone found one. There you go. There you go. So I love the that's a very I love the Steelers you know, flag up off the entrance. Polar bear. What's that? If you brought it back, it could be the polar bear. Polar bears. I don't know about polar bears. Be more I, of a, the, I'm more of a brown bear myself. You're the, but you're the ice pick now, so uh, yeah, I know there's a there's a conflict there. The polar the polar bear and the bear cat. And then you got alley cat. There's a lot of cats in business. There are a lot of cats. Oh, you could be a whole um. What's a group of cats? Ooh, uh, a Mumbai nuisance cat. if they're yelling at night. The Mumbai <laughs> cat from uh, Rinka King. Hmm. Oh, wow, that's a deep pool. That could, was a pro- yeah. that was an Indian based wrestling promotion that was produced by TNA. We could be the <laughs> we could be the Aristocats if we want to go the Disney route. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Or the uh Siamese cats from uh I industry. still think there should be some some indie promotion should do um cats. <laughs> Just like cats. where there's where there is no plot, there's no through storylines and and matches just continually happen and everyone has a cat themed name and cat themed attire. Hmm. Okay. That's creative. Yep. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm chewing on that for a minute. Tina says uh, <laughs> she learned a lot uh, that Twitter is full of surprises like a random follow from a WWE superstar. Who was that, by the way? Cause I, oh, yeah. John Cena follows Tina. Now. Oh, yeah, I did see that. <laughs> Happy birthday, Tina. Happy John Cena, Cena thinks you're cool. Um, can we go you, back to that you, cats thing real quick? Wait, wait, wait. You still work on the cats thing? Because uh, I'm yeah. thinking now, like Uh-oh. if if, it, if we're going all the way, mm-hmm. how big would that litter box have to be for the for the roster? Oh, what is oh, this anthracon? Be massive. <laughs> In fact, honestly, 
there should be a litter box match. <laughs> oh, how do yeah. you win or lose? Um, the loser gets thrown in the litter box. Yeah, that's what I would assume. Okay. I, okay. And then, and then, oh no, the loser has to get buried in litter. So it's a buried alive buried match alive for cats. Yeah, but for yeah. cats. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Huh. But they have nine lives. So do you have to yeah, bury them it, nine times? It's like a best of nine. <laughs> Is it a best of nine <laughs> falls? Nine it would be the most absurd match. It's ever. a whole show. Yeah, it's a whole show. But yeah, I'm. I nice. really think some indie Somebody's, promotion could do this. Somebody <laughs> starts clawing. The, the ring posts are just um the claw, scratching posts. The scratch posts. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. Well, yeah, yeah. You you put you put like some cheap some cheap carpeting around the ring posts. <laughs> I'm telling you, this this is the thing that can be done. We need to find our Tony Khan and just just make this a thing. <laughs> that makes go all meow. Mm -hmm. Wow, <laughs> Tony oh. Johnson making cat jokes all night on your Twitter. And you can have you can have one heel that's like that works for the pound. Oh, uh, their job is to wrangle up all the cats. Yeah. Oh no, this is getting deep. This is, so basically, this is the plot of Pound Puppies. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Deep old pool, but not the pound, one. But, pound but, kids. but not the one where they're in the fifties. Um. Anyways, <laughs> Tony Johnson, where can people find you online? I am Iceman Tony J on Twitter. I am Iceman Tony Johnson on Instagram, and I am Tony S on Facebook. There you go. And uh, Mad Mike four eight three on the Twitters. Also, YouTube.com slash Poppy. And at Sorgatron on the Twitters, um, I have not officially put this event out, but we are supposed to be joined uh, Wednesday night at 9 p.m. Eastern time by PWI 500 um, debuts, I think, for both of them. Uh, Lee Moriarty and PB Smooth, who are also going to be at Rise Wrestling against each other in the tournament. Yes. That was not by design. But it was like, okay, let's go with this. Because they're the first two that I thought of for that one. Um, so uh, they'll be uh, well, not both in person because uh, PB Smooth lives in uh, not Pittsburgh. I forget where he's well, from. Plus, so. you don't want to have a match break out in the studio, Sorg. Yeah, no, 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 definitely not. I mean, that, that, I mean. You're not zoned for that. We're not zoned for that. And the one leg wrestling match almost caught my Christmas tree on fire. So <laughs> there's that, too. Real thing. It's in the archives. Uh, we'll see you guys next time. Thank you, everybody, in the chat room. Thank you, producer Missy. She left. Bye, Missy. Even though already. she left an hour no, ago. She left like an hour ago. <laughs> we'll see you guys next time. Mayhem out. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.